In fact, words are so powerful at directing human perception that if you go back 2,000 years ago in the Aramaic language, we hear a phrase when it's translated through the Greek that goes something like this. The eye is the lamp of the soul. If the light for you is darkness, how deep will your darkness become? Have you ever read that phrase out of the Greek scriptures and gone, huh? What, what does that mean? If we go to the Aramaic, here's what that phrase says. There's some interesting Harvard research that was done that says that in a time frame where 10,000 brain cells fire, that is, there are 10,000 measurable units of electrical activity, that the maximum amount of information that shows up in the conscious mind is nine bits of data. It's estimated in that same time frame that there are approximately 20 trillion bits of data potentially available. So our mind uses a tiny fragment of what's going on in the world and takes a tiny fragment of what goes on in the mind to build its reality. And what was said in the Aramaic 2,000 years ago was the perceptual output of your mind, your reality, is the light or the guide for your journey through the 20 trillion bit world. It is the light for your earthly life. In Aramaic, darkness was hostility or fear. And so that next sentence says, if the light, that is the thing that guides you, is darkness. In one of our earlier workshops, we made a couple of inquiries of people. We asked folks how many had ever held a newborn child. And we asked each person who had held a newborn child to give us a descriptor that described the essence of that newborn. And we put a list on the board, and the list that we came up with was that the newborn was awesome, was love, was purity, peace, sweetness, inner sense, joy, wonder, and angelic. And we noticed that every word that described the newborn was some variation on the theme of love. And we offered the thought that that, that love, the words that describe the newborn, are the words that describe our essential nature. And that our essential nature, our being, is love. That, in Aramaic, is light. If the light for you is darkness, and then we ask people, how many have ever done something you regret? Anybody here ever do something you regret? And then think back to a time when you did something you regretted and, and look at what you were feeling as you did that. And we created another list. It's interesting to note, never in all the thousands of people that I've asked these two questions of, has anything from this side of the list ever turned up over here when we asked people when they did something they regretted? Regret always involved some form of hostility and fear. In Aramaic, that's darkness. And so what Yeshua was saying 2,000 years ago is there is a way to keep your intelligence turned on, and there is a definable way to turn it off. If hostility or fear, if that for you is the light, then how deep will your darkness become? What kind of things will you do to destroy yourself if the activity of hostility or fear is in your mind when you do a behavior?